Well, to help us answer that question, we're now joined by Marie-José Ull, the federal housing advocate. Madame Ull, thank you for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. Now, your office says if Canada is going to find its way out of this housing crisis, it needs to focus on purpose-built rental homes. So from what you saw in last week's economic update, is the government doing enough to get those housing units built? Well, it's not just purpose-built rental, it is purpose-built non-market rentals. You know, as the con uh, government has had this conversation around supply since I started my job back in, in 22, and that very first budget, uh, you know, that I was really paying attention to, you know, it was the conversation's always been supply, supply, supply. The important part is the right kind of supply. And when we're looking at investing taxpayers' funds, which is really precious, this is the 82 or now $100 billion, you know, once in a generation type of investment that the federal government is looking at doing, it has to be uh, invested in the right place. And it also needs to provide real results for people. So as we're looking at, um, you know, affordability being one of the biggest questions for a lot of people across the country, um, you know, is it going to be affordable beyond the first buyer or the first renter? And when we're looking at the track record of non-market housing, they're the only ones that can actually produce housing and keep it affordable in perpetuity. And that is the biggest bang for taxpayers' dollars. Okay, well, let's talk a bit more about that because there was money set aside for, for social and cooperative housing. Does that uh, address any of your concerns? Well, it's beginning. Uh, it's very welcome, um, as was the decision around um, alleviating the, the GST for construction of new co-op housing. Those some of the things that we're, we were looking for and we're certainly going to be looking for with this upcoming budget is an acquisition fund as well, because Canada is losing more housing that is affordable than we are actually been able to build and at an astro uh, uh, like astronomical rate, in fact, um, due to financialization of housing, due to, uh, you know, investment um, or, or treating housing as an investment. And we've seen that in, in um, homes, single detached homes, but also very pronounced in the purpose-built rentals. So we're looking at, uh, and you know, we're hoping to see an acquisition fund so that nonprofits and housing co-ops can purchase uh, some purpose-built rentals that are um, you know, still perhaps affordable um, naturally, you know, through through the time, especially in places where they have um, uh, rent control and where people have been living there for a long time and to really protect uh, the people's tenancies there and protect the affordability because without vacancy control, meaning that um, landlords can raise the rents uh, to whatever they feel the market will bear once the unit is vacant and that affordability that the previous tenants uh, we're, we're enjoying that is forever lost to the market and that feel that needs to be protected right now financialized actors meaning real estate investment trust pension fund um, pen, pension fund ac uh, acquisitions and asset managers own over well between 20 and 30 percent of the rental stock in Canada doesn't seem like much but uh, it's usually very targeted and very concentrated. So for example, little Jamaica in Toronto, most of the housing there is now uh, owned by financialized actors and we've got record amount of evictions, rent evictions and uh, people that are rendered homeless, but it's also tearing apart the community and in tearing apart a, a community that is, um, you know, quite racialized, it also destroys the informal, uh, economic networks as well as the local businesses. So the impact is very deep mm -hmm. and we're looking at the harm. So these harms need to be addressed and that can be done through an acquisition fund so that nonprofits and housing co-ops can purchase these these buildings. Yeah, well, well as you say, and, and the, this stock is, is dwindling, but at the same time we're hearing, as you know, the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation, they say that this country needs to build some 3.45 million homes to meet demand by 2030. But interestingly, you say that the CMHC is actually underestimating that number. Uh, exactly by how much? Well, there, you know, I, um, we asked uh, Dr. Carolyn Witzman to do a human rights approach to measuring the need and not just 
um, what we want in this country in terms of housing. Whereas CMHC focused on home ownership, um, Carolyn Witzman focused on rentals. Uh, people who rent are the hardest hit uh, by this, uh, you know, the economic crisis, by the pandemic. Um, and and by the housing crisis, and you know we would need at least 4.4 million homes um, to meet the needs of people. Dr. Carolyn Witzman focused on you know the people who aren't traditionally counted. Uh, and if you're not counted, you're not reflected in Canadian policy. And, you know, it's people in long-term care, people who are incarcerated, people who are homeless. And, you know, as you know, everyone's got a homeless encampment in their backyard now. It's not just something you see in Vancouver. We're seeing it in the far north. And, um, you know, these people are not counted when we're talking about the housing need, and they are certainly not counted in CH uh, CMHC's numbers. And that's why we need to to think about, um, you know, the supply issue is not just about those who want or what the private market is willing to build. Um, it, it is really about what we need as a country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I'm quickly losing time, but I, I, I do want to touch on that phrase that you use, the human rights approach to housing. You gave one example of it, but philosophically, how would that change policies in this country, do you think? Well, first, it's about engaging with people and looking at the need, and it's starting with those that need it the most. It is, um, well, especially in, uh, if we're calling things a crisis, it is about mobilizing all of the available resources to solve the issue as soon as possible, starting with those most in need. Now, I understand that, you know, with the economic crisis that we're facing right now, um, you know, everyone is feeling the pinch. But people who are worried about their mortgages, uh, mortgage payments increasing as they renegotiate their mortgage um, with the higher interest rates, it's, you know, they're going to see their mortgages go up by a few hundred dollars. The people who've been renting, who've, uh, in, you know, experienced rent evictions or have lost their homes and trying to find homes, you know, the home, the minute uh, uh, the rental, as soon as it's vacated, has been going up two, three, four, five, up to a thousand dollars a month. Um, due to financialization and, and traditionally people who rent are not usually people who have the means. Um, they're usually in, in lower paying jobs. They are usually, you know, otherwise they might have put money together to buy a house. Uh, not everyone, but, but a lot because this is kind of a housing model here in Canada. Um, and people who are uh, have mortgages pay themselves, whereas people who pay rent pay someone else's mortgage. And they're the mm -hmm. ones who are just the, that much more vulnerable. Marie Jose, Ula, thank you very much for the time. Really appreciate your insight into all of this. Well, thank you for having me. Take care, everyone.